a unique feature of the CH160 is the front fan, and that creates another variable in case airflow that builders have to consider. We need to talk about it. Welcome to Machines More. Thanks for checking in here, and a big thanks if you saw the CH160 review. And let's just do a quick follow up right now and talk about airflow in this case as it pertains to air cooling. So real quick, a, a few of you mentioned the side IO panel is removable for installing the GPU. In, indeed it is. Uh, just a couple of screws needed to pop that off. Okay, so that can come off. I've got the cables installed, uh, cinched down to the side, so it's not gonna move. But before you have that tightened up, you can remove it and get the GPU in that way. So if you are building and you have a bigger card you wanna slot it in there, don't manage the IO cables up first, just uh, get this in there, right? Like that. And then pop the uh, card in and then you can close this back up. So just, just screw at the front here. And then two screws at the side, or I guess this is the back. So for my first go at the case airflow for air cooling, I placed the rear fan as an exhaust, which was directionally synced up with the heatsink fan and also the front fan. Typically, you're gonna want these three fans to be moving air in the same direction if you use them. And I also had added a top exhaust fan at the, right here. So just a quick refresher in here, I've got an AIB side exhausting 6800 XTOC and a 7900X underneath this cooler. So this is a bit on the higher end of the power consumption spectrum. Rear exhaust is a sensible starting point when you look at the case and you kind of study the filters, but as many of you know and suspected because of the glass panel that goes over here, it's not actually the best. Uh, the reasoning is though, first off, you have no dust filter at the back. So if you intake from there without a filter and then you exhaust through filtered panels, you're gonna be creating a dust paradise very quickly. And second, if you did it up as a rear intake along with the front fan exhausting, so you're moving air this way, you'll actually have hot exhaust blowing out towards you if you've got the system next to you, and that can be very uncomfortable, uh, which a lot of users will have that scenario because they're gonna be using this as a desktop system, right? But regardless of those factors, I did experiment with just a, a few more configurations and we'll talk through the testing real quick today and I'll just give you my recommendations. So first off, some qualifiers. Even though the rear fan is not directly attached to the heatsink, the proximity to the large cooler and being behind the glass panel in effect means that for all intents and purposes, it is working as a heatsink fan and you never want to have the cooler fan and this rear fan moving air in opposite directions. So you can't have air coming this way and this way. That wouldn't make any sense. So I didn't test any scenario like that. In addition, these uh, two fans, they have to be similar in throughput. Otherwise you'll have suboptimal results. So the best way to do it is just to hook this up and hook this up to the same fan header via a splitter. And that'd be a reasonable way to, to mostly sync things up. Uh, second, because of the glass panel, the effects of fan-induced air pressure, they're gonna be very apparent. So assuming you're running an air-cooled GPU, we don't wanna make a scenario that fights the intake direction uh, from these fans. They're always gonna to wanna to take air in from the bottom. So when we run a fan configuration that results in net intake, meaning you have too much air coming in, uh, that's the so-called positive pressure, that's going to fight these intake fans. So those don't make sense to test. All right, so let's take a look at some results with the gaming example first. The discussion is really most pertinent for the combined thermals and then I'll loop in the CPU only because that ties into the best scenarios. Similar to what we know with the Enter Trend P with the glass panel, perhaps not surprisingly, the rear intake is your safest bet. This configuration prioritizes CPU thermals by giving the most direct air to the CPU cooler. Makes sense, right? Because it's right here and uh, a rear exhaust would tend to mix in some GPU exhaust, and that's what we'll see. Uh, the rear exhaust, it's a bit worse for CPU thermals. Oftentimes though, a rear exhaust would benefit GPU thermals, but that doesn't appear to be consistently the case here, likely because of the effect of the front fan. Perhaps a bit academic, I did test one scenario, which is a bit odd, but a rear exhaust plus front exhaust, so a dual exhaust, creates a super negative pressure, which actually gave the best GPU temps by a small margin, but you know, the, the CPU temps aren't really that great here. So 
Here's my recommendation. For most setups, for the best overall thermals, go ahead and run your air cooler in rear intake with a front exhaust and a top exhaust. This also tends to have the best temps with the CPU only rendering scenario. With the uh, 7900X, it's locked at 5.4 gigahertz and 1.25 volts. So if it's not showing here, it's because it got too hot to pass a test. This is a slight OC here relative to what the chip would normally boost to. So those two are, are pretty good. If the front exhaust bothers you from a practicality standpoint, which I suspect it might, especially in a warm environment, then an acceptable compromise would be just to run the top exhaust, which still results in very good GPU thermals and a practically insignificant CPU thermal penalty, both in the CPU only rendering scenario and just the combined gaming CPU temps. You'd also wanna do either of those for a flow through GPU cooler where the exhaust is coming up the backplate of the cooler. Since the directional exhaust coming out of the card would place a heavy penalty in a rear exhaust scenario. And you really don't wanna use your CPU cooler as a, a dedicated funnel for your GPU exhaust. As for the dust management issue, if you are concerned about that, you can get a magnetic 120 millimeter fan filter. I'll, I'll leave a link uh, down below for a few. Just get something like that. You can pop it onto the back of the case or you can even screw it on. Some of them just screw on ones and then you'll solve the problem there. If you intake at the back and exhaust at the front or exhaust at the top, you don't necessarily need the front or top mesh. And these guys are easily removable if you don't want them. So just pop it out of the, uh, of the cover. All right, so pretty simple, right? I'm glad it was uh, straightforward. So I will be doing a build guide in this. So please stay tuned, give a like, make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching.